chapter 3, lesson 2, is addition of mixed numbers. So here, we need to remember that we can only add fractions if they're the same denominators. Okay, also, we need to um, remember that there's, there could be different ways of adding these mixed numbers. The book adds the whole numbers first and then adds the fractions afterwards. So that's a good strategy. Um, however, we probably weren't taught that way when we were younger. So, but uh, if we want to follow the book, then it's okay. Uh, in this lesson, the kids will also be allowed to use calculators for some problems. Now, I said some, not all. So, I will be discussing both the ones that do not need the calculator and the ones that will be allowed the use of calculators. And these exercises will come from page 62. So, starting with 2A. So looking at the problem, the book offers guide uh, solutions, So, which means we need to start filling out and then we have to solve the way that they have instructed. So the first thing that they did was they added the whole number. So 2 plus 3 is 5. And then the 3 fifth goes here. So it's like adding the 3 to the 5. And then the 3 fifths belong to that whole number now, and then plus the one half. So again, if you're comfortable teaching that, then it's actually a good strategy, okay, because it's lesser work for the brain cells. But if you're accustomed to teaching the kids to do the fractions, the same denominator first, then that's also okay. So I will proceed with this strategy. The five stays five. But the thing that we have to remember now is that these have to be the same denominator for us to add. So we need to make it so that they're both over 10. So if I want to make that over 10, I need to multiply that by 2, which makes it 6. If I want to make that 10, I need to multiply that by 5, which makes that 5. So which means if I add it together, that will be 5 and 11 over 10. So clearly, 11 over 10 is improper. And the equivalent of 11 over 10 is 1 remainder 1, which means the 1 remainder 1, I'll put it here, would be 5 and 1 and 1 tenth. So our final answer when we add those two together is 6 and 1 tenth. So if we use our calculator to confirm that we got this right, when we type as we see, we will see that the final answer will give us 6 and 1 tenth. So I shall show how to use the calcu to check if we got this right and do another problem with a calcu as well. So to check our answer for 2a, we will input into the calculator 2 and 3 fifths. But to do that, what we need to do is press shift and then this fraction button, which makes it a mixed number combination. So we have a 2 and then you put the arrow up. Oops, you put the arrow to the right so that it goes to that box. We put 3 and then arrow down, and then 5, and then put arrow to the right, and then press plus, and then again, since we're putting a mixed number, shift, fraction, then we type up 3, arrow to the right, 1, arrow down, 2, and when we press equal to after we move the cursor to the right, we should get 6 and 1 tenth. But, it's 61 over 10. It's an improper fraction. So what we need to do to get 6 and 1 tenth is shift SD. And press the SD until you see the 6 and 1 tenth. Because if you let go of it, it'll go back to, oh, it stays as 6 and 1 tenth. 
So, let's try another problem. And that would have been 2B, letter A, which I wrote earlier. So, let's press on. This says shift, divide, 5, arrow to the right, 5, oops, erase, over 6, and then arrow to the right, plus, and then shift, divide, that will be 3, arrow to the right, 5 over 12. Okay, arrow to the right. Now, the thing that we have to remember is if we put it in the calculator, it will give us an answer in the simplest form already. So that's right now improper, shift, divide, gives us 9 and 1 fourth. So if it wants the answer as a mixed number, it's 9 and 1 fourth. If it wants an improper fraction, it would be shift, SD, oops, it's gone. Oh, let's press equal to 37 over 4. So as computed earlier in the calculator, the answer here would be 9 and 1 fourth as a mixed number. So it doesn't specify what form it wants, but since we started with mixed numbers, we should put our answer as a mixed number as well. So again, parents and kids, the calculator is a great tool if you know how to use it. So I hope that by me showing how to use a calculator, you're able to use it properly in the future. That concludes lesson two of chapter three. See you in the next lesson.